Buying a new home is a big decision. Style, location, price, carrying costs, there are so many factors that go into it. And it is likely the largest single investment a family will ever have to make. Ultimately, a house is more than an investment. It's a home, a refuge from today's world where the family can live and grow together and where long-lasting memories are created. With this in mind, many families choose to have their new home built as opposed to buying a resale home so they can have more of a say in the design, style, and options that meet their exact needs. Home building may have changed a lot in the past 50 years, but not when it comes to framing. The vast majority of builders still rely on 2x4 or 2x6 studs for the structure and fiberglass for the insulation. Often referred to stick and bat framing, this method of construction is inherently flawed. In fact, when it comes to thermal insulation, stick and bat construction often does not perform to building code. Today's builders often boast that they build their walls with 2x4 or 2x6 studs with R20 or higher fiberglass insulation, well above the R17 or R22 required by the National Building Code for exterior walls. The problem is that the fiberglass insulation R value ratings are determined in a laboratory under ideal laboratory testing conditions that do not reflect the real world environmental conditions your home is exposed to. Real world studies consistently show that as the outdoor temperature drops, the true performance of bad insulation decreases considerably to as low as R4, well below building code. The laboratory is a far cry from the real world, especially in northern climates. One method of rating the R value of fiberglass insulation is in a device known as a hotbox, which positions the insulation between two plates. Basically, the top plate is heated up and the bottom plate is cooled down. Sensors located along both plates measure the temperature at both extremes. By calculating how much energy is used to maintain temperature equilibrium at both plates, technicians can calculate how much heat actually transfers through the insulation and determine its R value. But the hot box is conducted in a closed environment where there is little air movement and no air leakage. In the real world, wall systems are heavily prone to air infiltration. This has considerable effect on fiberglass because its insulative properties are based on thousands of minute trapped air pockets within the material. Because fiberglass is a porous material, when it is used in a cold environment, it tends to work as a filter, allowing in warm air or energy to transfer to colder air. Perhaps fiberglass is better described as filter glass. Let's take a more detailed look at some of the inherent flaws with stick and bat construction. The lumber frame itself is an area of concern. First, wood is not an effective thermal barrier, so the studs will inevitably dissipate heat energy through conduction, regardless of whatever insulation is installed between them. In fact, on its own, a 2x4 stud performs only at an R4 level. Thermographic photographs of a wall section illustrate this principle perfectly. Just look at how the studs in this photo are clearly visible. The next step in framing is to add the exterior sheathing by nailing plywood to the studs. The only way to prevent air leakage would be to caulk along each joint to achieve a perfect air barrier. However, this is seldom done on the construction site due to the labor intensiveness of the task. Now, while house rot products will help reduce air infiltration from the outside, unfortunately they won't eliminate it due to staper punctures and openings at the seams. Fiberglass is now installed. It's commonly known that bad insulation loses its thermal effectiveness when compressed or improperly installed because those air pockets are impaired. However, even when properly installed, it is impossible to prevent gaps in small air channels from emerging along the surface of the fiberglass. The builder will next staple vapor barrier to seal the interior side of the wall. Stapling is fast, but if you wanted the vapor barrier to work at peak effectiveness, the builder would need to caulk each stud to eliminate all possible gaps where air can circulate. This, of course, is seldom done to save the builder time and money. Stapling only punctures the poly and allows gaps along the seams, 
defeating the whole purpose of the vapor barrier. Drywall goes on next, which means more nails and screws will puncture the vapor barrier. Electrical and plumbing openings also produce gaps that allow cold air in and warm air out. The result of all this is a wall that is not particularly airtight. Hot air rises and cold air falls within the wall, creating a convective loop, a circulatory effect that greatly undermines the thermal efficiency of the bad insulation. Remember, wherever air moves around, so does heat. A perfect example of this is when you feel a cold draft on your feet. The draft is actually heat or energy leaving your house and costing you money. And let's not forget moisture too. In the winter months, warm, humid interior air in kitchens, bathrooms, and laundry rooms carries moisture through electrical openings and punctures in the vapor barrier. This air is cooled as it comes into contact with a cold coming in from the outside. At this point, moisture condenses and is trapped within the wall system. Now whenever the system gets warmer, going from day to night because of daily temperature variations, or because of seasonal changes, these crystals thaw and moisture accumulates. Gravity carries the moisture down towards the bottom plate of the frame. Now we have all the prerequisites for mold growth. Mold requires a nutrient base, which is the wood from the bottom plate. Air circulation helps spread spores, and moisture provides a so-called water activity that allows mold to thrive in the home. Mold damage in traditional construction is quite common, and unfortunately most homeowners are unaware what's behind the drywall in their exterior walls. But judging by the frequency of sick house syndrome in the news, and the emergence of so-called mold exclusion clauses in insurance policies everywhere, the threat of mold is clearly something that all new homeowners should take very seriously. Fortunately for new home buyers, there is an alternative to stick and bat construction. Thermopan structural insulated panels, or Thermopan SIPs. They consist of an expanded polystyrene insulation, or EPS, laminated between two sheets of oriented strand board, or OSB. Compared to stick and bat construction, SIPs replace the studs, fiberglass, insulation, and vapor barrier. Air leakage through a SIP wall or ceiling is virtually impossible because of the solid, non-porous, rigid insulation of the panels. Because of this, SIP walls perform very close to the laboratory rated value of the EPS insulation. Another way to look at it is that SIP construction just isn't subject to the real-world building practice flaws that are endemic with stick and bat framing. So how do the two systems really stack up? A 1999 Brock University study is one of the most authoritative on the matter. Dr. Tony Shaw studied two side-by-side semi-detached homes, both built exactly the same, with the only difference being the exterior walls. The home on the left was built with 4.5-inch SIPs, while the one on the right was built with 2x6 studs and fiberglass insulation. An initial air tightness test to measure air leakage showed that the stick and bat home was subject to considerably more air leakage than the SIP home, 68% more in fact. The second conclusion was even more revealing. On one cold winter day, Dr. Shaw calculated that the stick and bat walls were allowing 15.6 BTUs of energy per square foot per hour to pass through while the SIP walls were allowing 3 BTUs of energy per square foot per hour. From an R-value perspective, the stick and bat home, which had fiberglass insulation rated at R19, performed only at a true R4 level. Meanwhile, the SIP home performed at an R17 level, the same value measured by the EPS insulation in a lab. So it's not surprising that SIPs qualify for the popular Energy Star rating commonly seen on appliances and other energy-saving devices. In Canada, SIPs can also help homeowners obtain a favorable rating under the EnerGuide for Houses program, as well as various incentives offered by the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Energy efficiency is just one of many homeowner benefits of a house built with SIPs. SIPs are immune from mold damage commonly found in stick-and-bat construction. 
They are structurally stronger than studs. They form a natural sound barrier from the outside. The construction quality is better with sips, as walls are straighter and impervious to unsightly nail pops. Cabinets are easier to mount, and pictures are easier to hang. Overall construction requires less labor, as there are fewer steps involved, and homeowners can save money right away. Testimonials from satisfied Thermopan customers substantiate these savings. One family from Port Hope, Ontario, reports that the energy costs of their new SIP home are merely half what they were used to paying with their old home. What's more impressive is that their new home is twice as big. And a home builder in Mississauga, Ontario, reports $1,400 in heating costs on a new 4,100 square foot home, the same amount incurred by the stud-built 1,000 square foot home it replaced. SIPs have been in use for over 50 years, and Thermopan has a perfect track record manufacturing panels for over 25 years. They are proven in residential and commercial construction alike for walls, roofs, floors, and even foundations. As energy prices soar and environmental awareness takes center stage, homeowners and builders alike are realizing the inherent flaws of traditional stick and back construction. Fortunately, there is an alternative. SIPs are clearly the better way to build. Okay.